All right, year 12, let's get our skates on. So if you're not quite finished, that's totally okay. I've put up these review questions, or rather I, I designed these review questions on the basis of things that I know you've encountered in the past, but especially at the start of the year, it's kind of like, mm, yeah, it's still a bit scratchy in there. However, the other thing is that one of the most important ways for you to develop, like when you come towards a major assessment task, like your AP3 is coming up, one of the ways that you can make sure you actually learn this stuff and it sticks in your brain is to keep on reviewing stuff that is just out of reach of your memory. Let me say that one more time. One of the ways to make sure stuff really sticks in your brain is to review exactly those things that are just at the edge of your memory, because here is why. Think about this. There are lots of things that you remember and lots of things you forget. How does your brain choose what to hold on to, what to retain and what to discard? Because you better hope, like of all the things you see and hear and watch, you better hope that a lot of that gets forgotten because it's not important, right? If it was all there clogging up, you'd have a huge problem trying to like work out what's important. So your brain purposely discards things that it thinks, okay, this is not valuable, get rid of it, okay? One of the ways it knows something is valuable is if you return to something again and again and again over time. Think about how you learned to tie your shoelaces. At this point, you could like tie your shoelaces, I hope, without even thinking, without even looking maybe, while you're having a conversation with someone. Now, once upon a time, that was a really sophisticated skill that you had to like focus on really hard and it would still be difficult to do. But you did it repeatedly, not like you didn't cram it, you didn't go to like a week of shoelace tying tutoring, you just did it steadily, maybe like a couple of times a week and it's just in there, right? Same deal with this, right? I will put money on the table that a question exactly like one and a question like two ABC will appear in your HSC in about nine months time. I'll put money on the table. You wanna be able to do this just without thinking, right? So if you're looking at this right now, as I saw a few of you and I'm like, mm, it's a bit scratchy, I know some parts, but other bits, then this is a sign, this is a good thing to review and to do it regularly, okay? Let's have a look at question one. The first thing before we get to an F dash X is you probably want to reframe the original F of X. You want to rewrite it slightly differently. The X cubed is fine, but how might you write one over X in a more helpful way? Any takers? Yeah, go ahead. X to the power of negative one, fantastic. If you do that, it's all in indices and I can differentiate term by term. So I hope your next line You've got F dash written rather than just equals because what you're about to do is not equal to the original line. X cubed becomes 3X squared. Power down, power reduces by one and exactly the same deal here. So instead of plus, it's going to be minus X to the negative two. You have differentiated, but as is normally the case, if they handed it to you in fractions, not in index form, generally you're trying to hand it back in much the same way. So I think it would be neat even if it's not necessary to write it and conclude it like so. Are you happy with that result? Yep. Okay, now let me get another show of hands here. Who finished 2A? 2A, most of you should have got there. Keep your hand up for 2B and 2C. Okay, about half of you, thank you, hands down. Now just before we go on, and I'm happy for you to keep on working, if you didn't get to 2C, like keep on working if you're right, but you'll often see questions phrased like this in your textbook, in exercises, in the HSC. Just eyes up for a second. 2C, 2C is the real question. That's what they really want you to work out. A and B are just kind of there to give you a bit of a leg up, right? And I really mean that. They're trying to like work out, here's the path you can take. And even, say part A, right? You've got this function, y equals x on x minus one appearing again and again. And if you can't differentiate it, it feels like, well, I can't do any of these things down here. But see how they give you, or when I say they, I mean me, I wrote this this morning. See how I've given you the derivative in part A? If you can't work out the derivative, maybe you're like, oh, I've only got three minutes left in the exam and I start this part. You can actually use this result in part A even if you haven't worked it out. If you know what to do in B and C, just say like, right, part B, given this, and then off you go, right? So if you ever struggle or maybe you get the derivative and you're like, oh, I got the wrong derivative, right? Use their one, right? They give it to you, they're trying to actually give you a hand. Us teachers, we call it a scaffold. Like you're building, you use a scaffold to help you, okay? Let's have a go at doing this derivative to make sure we're all on the right track. For y equals x on x minus one, to find dy on dx, what's the name of that rule that we're using again? 
this is a start of a Q. This is a quotient rule because that's a quotient you're dividing, okay? So just again, using my colors here, I find it helpful to designate which is which. Does it matter which is which? It does matter which is which, unlike in product rule. In product rule, you could make U or V, whatever. Why does it matter which one is which in this case? Yeah, go ahead. Just make, uh, make one the minus one the positive. Yeah, very good. Like you're actually doing division here, right? And the order of division matters. Uh, 24 divided by 6 is not the same as 6 divided by 24, okay? So here, some of you might remember, you use this version of the quotient rule. It's probably the most succinct one. It's not the one that appears on your reference sheet, by the way, but I think it's just a lot easier to write. And then we're just going to go through here. Okay, so help me out. What's V? X minus 1. What's U dash? 1. Now, even though 1 doesn't change it, I like to write down 1 because, number 1, it's for me to check off that I've done all of the pieces, and number 2, it communicates to the person who's reading, whether it's me, or a peer, or your marker, or you, when you're going back to check your own solutions, it communicates to them, I know what I'm doing, I'm going through step by step. So even if it doesn't change anything, I highly encourage you to write the 1. Uh, U in this case is just X, and then what's V dash? It's 1 again, so I'll just, I'll pop that in some brackets there. You happy with that? Okay, on the denominator, here comes V squared. Is there any advantage to expanding that denominator? Not really, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to collect my like terms on the top. X minus 1 in here. Take away X. So what do you get left with after everything cancels? Just that minus 1, because the X's are going to go. So minus 1 over X minus 1 all squared, so we're there. Like I said, even if you didn't get there, you can use my result. All right, part B. It says find the gradient. I've just found the derivative, which is a function. You can see based on my values of x, it changes. How do I find, or do you have a question or a suggestion? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. For part A, like, I got the same answer, but I didn't use the question. Okay, what did you do? Just like the, I just brought the x minus one to the part and then uh huh. Okay, so going back to something that we did up here, right? You can rephrase any function in different ways. And actually, this is a big thing for later on when we pass our review. You can reframe your function a different way and use a different rule. So, what you've done sounds, tell me if I got this right. You wrote this as x times x minus 1 to the negative 1. Yeah. And this is a product now, right? So, you could use product rule on it. Okay. Um, thank goodness we've got the same thing because whichever approach you should arrive at the same spot. I would say it's probably pretty similar, the amount of work that you probably had to do, yeah, because it's not, it, it's not neat either, it's like, oh, I'm going to get fractions and all that kind of thing, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that, it's totally fine. How do I, coming back to part B, how do I find the gradient using this derivative, what's the process that I do? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, fantastic. This derivative tells me the gradient anywhere, any value of x you like, I'll tell you what the gradient is. And I've got a specific one, so I'm going to write, and I encourage you to actually use some words, right? Don't just put equations down and like say, oh, I hope you know what this is going to mean. Actually say what you're doing. When x equals 2, dy on dx equals, and then I'm going to substitute into here, right? So negative 1 on the top, 2 take away 1, all squared. Does that make sense? So this is not difficult to evaluate on that denominator. 2 take away 1 is 1, square it, you still have 1, so what's your whole gradient? Just negative 1, okay? So you can picture that, right? It's kind of like sloping downward. And now our last step, our real question was, I need the equation of a tangent, okay? So this curve, it looks very roughly like this. It's one of these kinds of things, right? So I found, and actually um, in a second I'm going to get you to open up Desmos to confirm that we've got the right thing, so if you want to, open up your laptop now just so it spins in the background. We found that the gradient at this point is negative 1. So that's kind of slanting down like so. We know it's gradient, but to find its equation, there's another piece of information I need. The question doesn't tell you, though. You've got to kind of work it out. What's missing? What do you reckon? Yeah. I want to find what the, um, what the gradient of the gradient is. Yeah, that's right. Where the, where the point is, the y value before it. Yeah, very nice. I know what the slope is. I know the x value because they told me, they told me, I told you right from the start, but I don't, I'm missing the y value, right? You can see it's like 2 comma something, right? So I'm substituting x equals 2 into the derivative. 
Now I'm going to substitute x equals 2 into where else? Where do I go now? Fantastic. Nice one, Josh. Back to the original function. So when x equals 2, this is true. And when x equals 2, y is equal to, well, let's have a look. I'm going to get 2 over 2 minus 1. Do you see how I've substituted it into a different thing? Right? Uh, that's going to be just 1 on the denominator again. So you just get 2 over 1, which is 2. You happy with that? I've got a coordinate now, uh, 2 comma 2. I've got a gradient, so then I can combine those to say the equation of the tangent. Can I encourage you again, please use some words, uh, even little words like when or and or something like this, it actually tells me what all of your equations mean. You've got a lot of equations on your page, okay? What equation should I start off with? I've got a point, 2 comma 2, I should fill that in, shouldn't I? I've got a gradient, negative 1, so what form of a straight line will I use? Yeah, go ahead. Mx minus x1. Oh, hey, have a look at this, right? I've got an x1 and a y1, that's the coordinates of my point. I've got an m, that's my gradient. So we call this one, very original, right? Point gradient form of a straight line, because you put in the point, put in the gradient. Let's go ahead and actually do it. We worked out that y coordinate just above, it was 2. We already worked out the gradient up here, it's negative 1. And then here comes x minus, what was the x coordinate again? 2. That's coincidentally the same. That is the equation, but we can tidy this up a little bit, right? I'm going to do a couple of things at the same time. I'm going to expand here, and I'm also going to add 2 to both sides. So it looks to me like I get minus x plus 2, watch that double negative, and then I'm going to add this 2 to both sides. Yeah, you okay with that? So just to finish off, minus x plus 4. Can you go ahead into Desmos and put, number one, this equation here, and could you also put the original function that we got handed, this weirdo looking quotient, and let's see what we actually have. 